I urge all of you, all of you, to enjoy your life, the precious moments you have, to spend each day with some laughter and some thought, to get your emotions going, to be enthusiastic every day. And Ralph Waldo Emerson said, nothing great can be accomplished without enthusiasm, to keep your dreams alive in spite of problems, whatever you have, to be able to work hard for your dreams to, become, to come true, become a reality. Now I, I look at where I, I am now and I know what I want to do. What I would like to be able to do is to spend whatever time I have left and to give and maybe some hope to others. Courage is a difficult thing to find. At times it appears before our very eyes when and where we might least expect it. Often we're not really aware of it when we're right there to witness it firsthand. And if we're really lucky, that courage rubs off on us just a little. And a piece of that wonder might be just enough to give us some fortitude to face what life throws at us, if we are lucky. Jim Valvano was a pretty good college basketball coach who won a national championship. Eight weeks after that now legendary speech, he died of cancer. When he delivered those words, he knew he was dying and didn't have long. Yet the life he exhibited in those 10 minutes or so lives on to this day in the lives of those he touched. The man had exceptional courage. He says, not only will the role of women in the church be more prominent and important, this is also what he had to say, in specific about gay priests. If someone is gay, and I'm quoting, if someone is gay and he searches for the Lord and has goodwill, who am I to judge? End quote. This, of course, does fly in the face, really, of his predecessor, Pope Benedict, who had said that men with deep-rooted homosexual tendencies should not be priests. Again, as you mentioned, George, just another sign of conciliation. Pope Francis is a man of courage. You may not agree with his intent about his statements on homosexuals, but the mere fact that he had the strength to say it out loud speaks to the character of the man. He's unafraid to speak his mind, to perhaps change the course of an ancient religion, and to suffer the hammer of those who frankly wish he would shut up and not stray into such sacrosanct areas of church lore. But in that moment, and several more since, the man displayed surprising courage. I think until anyone has walked a mile in my shoes, and knows what they're facing and has felt the like just bone splitting headaches that I get sometimes or the seizures or the inability to speak or the moments where I'm looking at my husband's face and I can't think of his name. Brittany Maynard's message was clear. In her interview for CBS This Morning, she said she intended to die with dignity. So to the people who would say, well, you're choosing to end your life, that's suicide, you would say, no, no it's No, cancer what? is ending my life. I am choosing to end it a little sooner and in a lot less pain and suffering. All of 29 years old, Brittany Maynard displayed unheard of courage, the kind few of us would ever believe possible, so young and seemingly so full of life, yet carrying an inoperable brain tumor that numerous doctors said would end her life. There were no second or third chances here. She would die, no escape. So instead of crying about it, she took care of her bucket list and, as promised, took her own life to end her suffering and that of those around her. She just couldn't have lived any longer. She was in excruciating and increasing pain. Brittany Maynard leaves us with an example of courage we cannot fathom. This week, a Vatican official, president of the Pontifical Academy of Life, condemned Murphy taking her own life, calling it an absurdity, describing it as an error that she was choosing to die with dignity. Those words took no courage, just the sanctimonious babble of a pathetic, doddering fool who would rather seek to pass judgment on someone who didn't want to die, but was killed by an insidious disease that knows nothing of mercy, one causing such unbearable anguish I doubt any God would wish another day of enduring. For God, as we are all told, is merciful in all things. We live our lives and make our own choices, and the courageous often do things fools and those seeking to further their own cause for some egotistical reason don't even try to understand and fail to see that how we die is also a part of how we live. Some choose dignity and make a permanent mark on our lives. Others choose condemnation and leave a permanent stain on society. Which one are you? That's telling it like it is. Next hour here on Midpoint. Republicans going after Obamacare now with a vengeance, but is it possible they will go too far and leave a vacuum of health care for millions? And why the printed words of an overhyped actor have charged the debate about sexual child abuse. That and much more coming up right here on Midpoint, where we question everything.